Chuck Hamilton of the Warbirds Classics Alliance on another pilot interview uh, video. And today we have the great pleasure of having uh, the world traveler, Noel Hunt, originally from South Africa, worked his way into the States and actually all over the world. But, uh, uh, Noel's, I guess, home base was Michigan for many years, and that's how I got to know you. But Noel this year, actually last year I think he started campaigning this aircraft, but uh, such a unique, gorgeous aircraft, one of a kind. Uh, it's an otter. Sea otter. Sea otter, yeah. yeah. And uh, Noel, uh, you built this from your own plans, correct? Yes, I wanted something different. I guess it's a little bit different. So where, I mean, did you start with the set of three views? Was there a known plan set? How'd this all come about? It's uh, three views that I got from online and uh, downloaded them and drew the... Just started the building from, from there. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. That's what I enjoy doing. I really enjoy it. Um, and what scale is this? It's one-fifth scale. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the real one, the full-size one was about 46 foot wingspan. Okay. So it's a large biplane. It really is. Um, uh, typical balsa... Uh, construction. Yes. Also yeah. fly, uh, aircraft fly mostly, a little bit of light fly, but mostly heavy duty stuff, particularly around the landing gear and uh, the engine. What's your weight? Uh, it comes in just under 30 pounds. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you've got a really nice wing loading. Yes, nice. Goodness. Very comfortable, flies slowly, moves incredibly well. And, you know, everybody, so let's, let's get to the to the, to the fun part, you know, you've got a nice little radio engine in there. Talk about that. Okay, we've got the Saito uh, 60cc, three-stroke radio, yep. four-stroke gas. Uh, it, when I put it in there, I was kind of concerned it might not have enough power. It's got plenty like, of yeah, power. I've seen it fly. <laughs> this has plenty of power. Yeah, it's got, it's got lots of pull. Yeah, and then finally, let's let's, let's talk about the gear. Okay. Everybody, everybody's going to ask about these gears. Yeah. What, uh, tell the, uh, the, uh, the startup of how you get there. That's probably your biggest hurdle when you were looking at this and what you wanted to do. It certainly was. It certainly was the biggest head scratcher from a design perspective. Uh, the gear goes up to about 100, just over 100 degrees horizontally, but it sweeps back 32 degrees. Oh. So getting all that trig, trig kind of figured out was, it was a head scratcher. And then uh, Dennis Crooks helped me out with some uh, slightly modified standard robot gear. Okay. The gear retracts up into the lower wing, unlike the kind of Grumman products that go yes. the fuse lines. This just uh, sweeps up into the lower wing. Okay. Fantastic. And is it pneumatic or electric? This is a uh, pneumatic. This I, is I, I like the pneumatic. So yeah. I, I do as well. Electric, yep. uh, I enjoy uh, electric gear well. have their place and yes. their time, and I think maybe a little bit down the road they'll they'll work uh, into the. Uh, into the larger scale. Now, I just something I just noticed. Yeah. This has flaps in the upper wing. Yes, the the full size one only had flaps in the upper wing. It did have. Um, they looked like flaps in the lower, but they were actually just for storage. They, they would fold up so the wings could be folded back oh, against right. the fuselage. But, okay. Uh, if you look at the these in the water, if they had lower flaps, they would have been dragging in the water. Right. Yep. They sat pretty low. Okay. Um, the covering. What's the covering on this? So the fuselage, I used uh, three-quarter ounce uh, fiberglass and polyacrylic yes. for applying it. I didn't use um, uh, epoxy. You want the pure water-based system? Yes. Yep. yep. And the wings, I used the SIG coverall and dope. Okay. And then the whole nitrate and buter or just, just nitrate? Just nitrate. Okay. Just nitrate. Probably what, three, four coats? Uh, yeah, it was five. Was it? Okay. Yeah, it was, yeah. I, 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 I love that stuff. Yeah, I really do. I mean, because the, the reality is, you look at this airplane ten years down the road. Yeah. It looks like it does now. Yeah. That's when you when you do that method. It's a little time consuming, a little stinky gas. Yeah. And uh, but I, I, I think uh, it's, it's well worth it. And then the uh, top coat is uh, just a bare household exterior paint. Man of my own heart. Yeah. Man of my own heart. Loving the latex paints. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's talk about the fun part. Flying. Yeah. How she fly. You know, it was a, a surprise. I was expecting a bit of an animal, but it, it's a sweetheart in the air. You can stall this thing and it'll just kind of slide the wing off. Right, nice gentle. Gentle stall. Um, it's a little bit squirrely in the air in, in terms of it's not a pattern ship. You right. Don't, you don't point it. you got to fly it all the time. She's sticking rudder girl? Uses the rudder. Yeah. Definitely yeah. needs the rudder and the rudder is super powerful. Um, and the landing is the only challenge because all the weight and the it's air. High, it's a high CG. Uh, well, the CG and also yeah. the air. You know, yeah. The wind, any kind of crosswind wants to swing it off those narrow gears. So the landing has been a challenge. 
But landing here on the grass is it's a, it's great. Well, you're in Arizona now, where you've retired, yeah. and you're, you're flying hard surface all yeah, the time. Right. So I must commend you, brave man. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. So yeah, the flying has been a very very nice surprise that uh, it flies as well as it does. And of course, just having something that looks a little different in the air. Oh, I just love fun. this. I yeah. love those unique. Some people might even call them ugly airplanes. You know, yeah. I fly a Wildcat. Uh, I'm getting ready to actually do a bigger one. But uh, they're it's just so cool. Yeah. And uh, when I when I saw that you were working on this, and then you know in the, in the Royal Navy color scheme, I, I just love this color combination. Yeah. Oh, this thing just it just grabbed me by the heart. Yeah. A few, a few interesting things about the full size is it was the last biplane to go into service for Royal Air Force and Navy. Right. Um, and it's this and the its predecessor, the Walrus, were created. And they became over a thousand pilots out of the water. Really, most of them are out of. The Channel. English Channel, yep. But they were used in the Pacific as well, and uh, there were quite a few pilots who were in the water were quite happy, happy, to, happy, to, happy to see this ugly duckling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, man, I, I thank you. Um, thank you for coming back to the Midwest, back to your roots this summer. I know you're kind of on this little worldwide or central swing, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I've got to see you up at Goshen, and I had a pleasure to see you here. But yeah, um, the have Fond du Lac as well. And, yeah, I'm, we missed that Fond du Lac, unfortunately, a family thing, but uh, uh, heading back home after this event. Safe travels. Thank you. But on behalf of Andy, get in myself, Robert Classic Alliance. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Always nice to see you. I like and uh, I just love what you thought. Alright, enjoy it. See you guys. Bye.